friends, I'm Pastor Frank Davis, and I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for you being with us here this morning at the Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church. We're sharing in our program that we call The Study Hour, which is brought to you by Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church in New Orleans and the Little Bethel Baptist Church in Amite City, Louisiana. Our two congregations share together, along with several of you, our good friends who labor with us and praise God who pray for us and those of you all who donate with us to be able to bring this telecast and radio broadcast to you. Those who are with me here at Bible Way today would love to say to you, good morning. Good morning. Amen, amen. Again, we thank God so much, for God is awesome. Today at the Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church, those of you watching us, uh, we're celebrating 32 years as a church. And we bless God that God has kept us and God is moving us and we're just moving on by the grace of God. Those of you who are in our neighborhood will be doing our uh, morning service, which starts at 8 a.m. officially. And we ask that you come and be with us and uh, the Reverend Dr. Melvin Zeno, amen, president of West Side Association, will be our speaker. And we would sure love to have you be with us during that time. And we just look forward to a great time in the AB area of today. Uh, our, one of our young sons, amen, but Jeremy Shropshire, amen, our 17-year-old preaching son of ministry. We bring you the message at Little Bethel. And to those of you out around Liberty, Mississippi, and uh, right around, uh, let's see, Liberty, and out in, uh, off of Macomb, uh, I'll be out at the New Zion uh, Baptist Church out there, Pastor Stokes. And my friends in Mississippi, it's May Day out there. My God, they tell me there's going to be two of us preaching, and whole lot of food and fellowship and it's going to be something. We hope to see you out there sometime, I think around uh, 1 o'clock on today. So by the grace of God, got a big day coming out uh, and we look forward to see all of our friends in the different areas. Thank God for another opportunity to preach God's word. Amen. 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 Why don't you turn your Bibles, those of you who are watching and listening, to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. We have been laboring in John now for several weeks and we thank god john's been exciting i i i, 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 I I'm, I'm, I'm just at a point where i just loving john I always did love john but it looks like we're gonna be leaving john and not you know kind of soon sooner than i want to leave john but today we want to look at a very popular passage of scripture that most all christians are familiar with and that's the 14th chapter of john i want to call this message today the living word is god's only way. Look at somebody and say, the living word is God's what? Only, only way. Put that emphasis on that word only. only. Say it again. Only. One more time. Only. Amen. The living word. Who is the living word? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. He is God's only way. Amen. They've been folk out here today and many of these great institutions uh, of religious learning. And they're teaching things that I don't know where it came from, well, no, I do know where it came from. Amen. I, amen. It, it, it didn't come from God. I'll just say that. I'll be nice this morning. It didn't come from God. But they're teaching people today that there are many roads that lead to God. There are many different ways to get to God. But according to what Jesus said, the great I am, right here in John chapter number 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's some shout. Give God praise and word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. I am an excited preacher about that. Amen. Here, Bob, we're going to be celebrating 32 years, and, and, and I look at it. And praise the Lord, we've been in business here at this church uh, preaching Jesus Christ as the only way for 32 years at this church. Amen. Amen. We have not taught another way. There are not any other ways, but we are standing on Jesus Christ, the Bible way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As we look at this word today, there are three points that I'm going to focus on. And the four points that I want to focus on are found in verses 1 through 4, verses 1 through 4, where we understand that the living word, uh, God's only way to the promises of God. 
He's the only way to the promises of God. And then he's not only that, but in verse 5 through verse 11, he is the only way to the presence of God. Amen. Amen. And then in verses 12 through 14, he's the only way to the purpose of God. Amen. So Jesus Christ is the only way to the promises of God, praise God, the presence of God, and the purpose of God. When John wrote this gospel, John brought home some things that I want to leave with you, even though we're coming close to the end. I, I saw this and I thought, I need to share this with our people. John has done a masterful job presenting the living word. And in chapter 1, verses 1 through 34, he presents the living word as the living word. In chapter number 1, verse 35, through chapter 12, verse 50, he presents the living word through his public preaching. In chapter 13, verse 1 through chapter 17, verse 26, he presents the living word, amen, as God's, amen, person who receive our punishment. My, 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 amen. And in verse chapter 20, verses 1 through 31, he presents the living word as God's powerful, powerful, resurrected person, amen. And then he presents the living word in chapter 21, verses 1 through 25, and gives us his perfect plan. And beloved, when I looked at all of this, I'm just excited about the living word. Amen. Amen. And today as we look at the living word, looking at him, he's God's only way. The disciples of Jesus Christ were in the upper room according to chapter 13 of John. This wonderful sermon that Jesus was presenting personally among and privately among his disciples. They were in the upper room. Jesus was just hours away from going to the cross to die for our sins and to go to a grave and thank God the third day to rise again. Yeah. Beloved friends, he had spent three years and some with these men, getting them ready. They were walking with him. My God, they were the learners. He is the teacher. He had been demonstrating everything to them about the kingdom of God and the power of God and he being the person of God. And now in this upper room, in this upper room, he now shares with them in chapter 13 of John. He talks to them about foot washing, demonstrating foot washing to let them know that God's people ought to know how to serve one another. Amen. Look at somebody and say, we ought to know how to serve each other. Amen. Amen. That foot washing what didn't say go out and wash feet. It said go out and serve. Amen. I want to thank God for many of our good members. I, I, I've been watching. You've been, you've been serving. You've been serving. We serve our brothers and sisters. We serve people. Amen. And thank God for that blessing. And then Jesus not only taught that by the foot washing, the service of God, but also he did some foretelling. He did some foretelling. That means to tell before. And that got the disciples real sad. Because he began to tell them in chapter 13 that he's going to be betrayed. Being betrayed is not bad if it's an enemy. But being betrayed is terrible when it's a friend. Amen. Someone that you let into your heart. Someone you let into your circle. Someone you let into your fellowship. And they begin to ask each other, is it I? Is it I? Well, they got all upset about that. And then he continued to share not only the foretelling of a betrayal, but he gave another foretelling that, my God, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me. Friend of mine, that was rough because Peter was a key man. Yeah. Amen. Not only, he was a key man. He did not want to be. He was a key man in the work of the Lord. And my God, he was to the point that he, Peter, was upset and furious because Jesus was telling him, man, you're going to let me down. You're going you're gonna to deny me. And Peter went to telling Jesus, I'm not going to do it. They'll all deny you and all that. I'm going to be right there. And beloved friends, why would one call Jesus a liar? Yeah. But that's what Peter was doing in a nice way. You ever call somebody a liar in a nice way? Yeah. That's what he was doing in a nice way. Lord, you lying. Yeah. But beloved friends, Jesus told him before the rooster crow, you would deny me three times. And of course he did. This was a setting of this personal sermon teaching with Jesus and his men. My God, could you imagine if he said that to the men that followed him? What can you expect from people that didn't know him at all? The men became upset. They began to be hurt. And then he dropped the bombshell on them. 
in chapter 14, All right. where our lesson picks up today. As we look at the living word, it's God's only way. In chapter 14, beginning at verses 1, 2, 3, and 4, Jesus says, Now let not your heart be troubled. Shall ye believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. <laughs> Beloved, we see here that the living word, Jesus Christ, is God's, God's only way to the promises of God. Jesus is making promises to these men. Why? Because he just told them about the worst things you needed to hear. I'm going to die, I'm going to leave you. One of y'all going to deny me. One of you going to betray me. And none of y'all want to serve each other. Amen. You're going to act like some funny people in here. Amen. They became upset, and rightfully, they should have. But Jesus wanted to let them know, in the midst of these kinds of things, in the midst of when things look rough, and when things look very, very, very tense and terrible, that we still can stand on the promises of God. Amen. Yes, yes. That's why he says in that first verse, let not what your heart be troubled. In other words, uh, Jesus Christ is saying, don't be troubled. The word trouble, we could use the word don't be agitated. Yes. Amen. Don't allow anything to agitate you. Look at somebody and say, don't let nobody blow your cool. Amen. Yes. Amen. Then look at somebody and say, don't let any circumstance or situation get you upset. Amen. Hold your ground. Hold your ground. Why? He's saying, look, he has just told them of some of the worst things that can happen. And that were going to happen. But then yet he comes right back and says, but don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your mind be agitated. Don't let yourself get into a situation where even in hearing this, even knowing what I'm telling you that's about to happen. But it's okay. Why? Because verse 2, verse 2, he says what? In my father's house. He said there are many mansions. And verse 1 ended by saying, if you believe in your God, he said, believe in me. Those two go together. In other words, if you have faith in the Father, then have faith in the Son. If you believe what you believe about God's word and God's truth, then stand on it and don't allow anything to get you agitated or take you away or get you crossed up, but stand fast in my word and in my promises. It's about the promises, amen. The Lord always keeps his promises. Praise God, praise God, praise God. He always keeps them, y'all. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. He keeps his promises. And Jesus Christ is the one who makes sure, he is the one that makes sure that everything the Father says come to pass. Yeah. Because he says, I am in the Father, yeah. and the Father is in me. And beloved friends, I thank God for Jesus today. I thank God, amen, that I can stand on the promises. Yeah. Oh, the hymn writer says, standing on the promises yeah. of Christ our King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Yeah. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Amen. Yeah. Beloved, we don't hear much of that singing like that in church no more. Yeah. Amen. Folks don't only, don't only sing stuff like that, but those are the good hymns yeah. that stands on the good word. Amen. Yeah. Jesus Christ, beloved, at this point, says to them, in my Father's house. In other words, look, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. Yeah. Your King James Version. Other versions say, I believe the Moffat Version said, there are many abodes. Uh, in the New Living Translation, it said there are many rooms, and it, it got my attention because those of us who live in America, amen, we like that word mansion, amen, amen, we like that word mansion, amen. In my father's house, there are many mansions, and when we think about mansion, we think about Jed Clampett and Beverly Hill Village, and amen, living in a, a mansion, a 
big old house, amen, yeah. and we figure heaven is a place with big old houses, and amen, and we're going to get us a big house in heaven with, amen, with 50 bedrooms, amen, and my God, and servants, and we really think we're going to have it like that, but I, 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 last time I checked, we'll be serving in heaven, amen, yeah. now, amen, but, but I want to bless your heart today, uh, that was the ideal thought of many who think from this, this western way. I, I want you to look at it, though, closer. I believe that it speaks more of some of the other versions that says, in the Father's house are many rooms. In other words, many dwelling places. There are many places that where God's people will have a spot. And you know, and, and I know some of y'all still look and say, oh, man, I thought I was going to get me a mansion. Y'all been singing that song, Angels Get My Mansion. Man. Friend of mine, let me tell you something. You just want to be where God is. I just want to be where God is. I used to sing a song as a teenager. Say that a mansion made of stone and a shanty all along God cares. To the rich or poor, to the one in need, to the beggar man, and even to the thief, God cares. And that's the most important thing to know, that God cares. And the greatest promise of all to know that one day we will live with him. And beloved, whether it's in a, a great house, I'm in God's house. Amen. And to be with God is far better than anything else. But let us remember, let us not just necessarily think the American way. The American way, think God's going to give us a big old place and we have a lot of stuff. We'll have a, a weekly garage sale. Yeah. Amen. You know, we, we got stuff now. Look at your house lately. Amen. Go back and look at the house God give you now and see how much stuff you got in. Amen. We're not going to go up there and stuff up God's head. Amen. 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 He's going to give you enough space to live in. And you ain't going to hoard and carry a bunch of junk with you. Amen. You ought to tell me that. Amen. Amen. That, that's a fact. We want to, but we will have a wonderful place. And that's the blessing. Jesus will be there. All the same, God will be there. It's going to be a great time yeah. to be with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So that's why I say, in my Father's house, a wonderful promise. He promises a place. And not only does he promise a place, but I love him. I love him because he says in verse 3, look at verse 3 of chapter 14. He says, and if I go, I'm going to do what? I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I will what? Come again and do what? Receive you where? Unto myself. That what? Where? There, you may be also. I'm reminded, amen, uh, in fact, uh, this uh, 29th of May will be 36 years I've been married to Sister David, amen. And, and I look back on it, and I remember our wedding day. I still remember the day. And we had a, a wonderful wedding and a nice little reception, and it was a great time. And then it was all said and done, and she and I, went to our little apartment in Lawrence Creek. Some of y'all remember Lawrence Creek. Amen. And, and uh, when we were going out there, we left the wedding reception. They had all kind of food at the wedding reception, everything. But we were hungry. Amen. And you're hungry when you leave the reception. And, you know, we didn't, they didn't take makers like people do. They got a little take home stuff. We, ain't nobody sent nothing home. They ate it all. The blessing was a Jim Dandy chicken. Amen. Jim Dandy chicken was over there off a crowd. Amen. And you went off the service room nearby. And, and, and here I am in my blue tuxedo. Amen. She's in her white dress. And I pulled up into Jim Dandy. Went in there and got a box of chicken. Yes, indeed. Went on home to our little apartment. Amen. And that was the best chicken I ever ate in my life. Amen. I mean, it was like steak. It was wonderful. The point I'm trying to get you to see it, it was wonderful not because of the chicken, but because I was with the one I love. I'm trying to help you to see something. When Jesus comes back, we're going to go with him to the place. And we're going to be excited because we are with the one we love. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Oh, that's the blessing. That's the blessing. That's the excitement of it all. The Savior is coming back. The disciples were distraught. But he's saying, don't get agitated. Don't be worried. 
Everything's going to be all right because the promises of God, I will keep them. I will not leave you comfortless. So in verse 4, he says, where I go, you know. And the way you know. Now, they were upset. And when people get upset, they forget. Yeah. Amen. And so they say, well, Lord, Brother, Brother Thomas. God bless Brother Thomas. Amen. Yeah. Brother Thomas, in verse number 5, he jumps out there and he begins to say, now, Lord, <laughs> oh, he said, we don't know where you go. And we don't know the way. This is what he's saying. So we don't know where you go. Now, Jesus has been talking about where he's gone since he started ministering to them. But that helps me to understand so I can bless you today. When trouble comes in our lives and difficulties and things that are hitting us, don't feel bad if you have a moment where you wonder where it's gone. Don't feel bad. And anybody tell you, get on your case, don't, don't worry about it. All of us have those where is God moments. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Some of y'all sitting up here today like you ain't never had none. Yeah. If you haven't had one, keep, keep living. Yeah. When things hit you from every which way and all of a sudden you will just want to say, Lord, and you throw your hand in the air. That's all Thomas was saying. Thomas couldn't think straight. Jesus just told him, my God, all, all, them, all we are going to forsake him and Peter going to deny him and somebody going to betray him and he got to go to a cross and die. Oh my God! Where you going? We don't know where you're going. We don't know the way. But Jesus came back with those wonderful assuring words. Jesus gave them the words in verse 6 and 7 that I call. If I want to, this is a tongue twister to me. I got to say it slow. Jesus gives an expression of exclusivity. Yeah, yeah, I got it, amen. An expression of exclusivity. The word exclusive. Jesus is exclusive. Jesus is in a class all by himself. Jesus is not like anybody else. He simply said, uh, uh, Thomas, and all the fellas, listen to me carefully. He said, I, and I can see him pointing at himself, I am the way. Thomas, you don't have to look for a way, man. You don't have to try to figure this thing out. Uh, uh, Peter, I know you're going to mess up, but that's all right, but I'm the way. Amen. Philip, you still can't get it together. That's all right, but I'm the way. By this time, Judas, get out. He gone. Amen, amen. He missed the way. Amen. But Jesus is saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. In other words, I am the, have exclusive rights, exclusive privileges. I am exclusively the only one that God saw fit to send down to this insignificant piece of matter that we call earth. I came down through 40 and two generations. I came down in the power and person of God. I got a body on the outside. I'm divinity on the inside. My mama was a virgin. My God, my daddy is God. Ain't nobody like me. You'll never meet another like me. Ain't nobody coming like me. I am the way. I am the truth. I I wish somebody had exclusivity. Hallelujah, somebody. We got to stand on that. That's assurance, y'all. Yeah. Praise God. God is letting us know that, the amen through Jesus, that to get into his presence, yeah. we got to come through the way. That's my yeah. point, too. Amen. His presence. We got to come through the way. And Jesus says exclusively, I'm the only one can get you into the presence yeah. of the Father. Yeah. From the mind, we can't get in the presence of God no yeah. other way. Yeah. We can't come the way of Joseph Smith no. and the Mormon church. No. We can't come the way of Russell and the Watchtower people and with those Jehovah's Witnesses. We can't come the way of Ellen G. White. Amen. As the seven day Adventists. We can't come the way, amen, of those who went to Jonestown and hung out, amen, with Jim Jones. No, beloved friend, many have come and many will come and many are 
about and they're crying out today, I'm the way, I'm the way, I am the way. Beloved friend, Jesus said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. There's only one exclusive way, and that way is the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friend of mine, you're going to walk on the streets of gold. you got to come through the way. If you're going to have a, one of those dwelling places, uh, you got to come through the way. Uh, if you want to live in a land where the wicked will cease their tumbling uh, and the women will be at rest, uh, you got to come by the way. Uh, friend of mine, and Jesus said, I am. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Beloved friends, that was to give the brothers encouragement. And that was to give me encouragement. And that was to give you encouragement. Beloved friends, psychology, sociology, anthropology, beloved friends, cosmology, any of the other ologies, amen, which means the study of, if you add anything on the front of it, will not help us. We need Jesusology, amen, Christology. We need to have Jesus Christ and him alone. Look at a name and say, only Jesus, baby. Only Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. That's the exclusivity that he expresses in verses 6 and verse 7. But then when we get to verses 8, uh, yes, through verse number, amen, 11, we see a little more discussion going on. We're still talking about getting into the presence of God. Philip after hearing that, that Philip just heard it. They all heard it. And Philip still all shook up. Philip all shook up. Philip said unto him, he said, Lord. At least he said, Lord. Amen. Come on. Come on, y'all. He said, Lord. Amen. Amen. He did better than some folk. Amen. Some folks said, what you say? But he said, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Show us the Father. And it will satisfy us. That King James suffice it means satisfy. In other words, and this is what he was saying in, in simple today's language. Lord, give us another sign. Oh, yes. Give us another sign. <laughs> give us another sign. But you know what? Jesus didn't bash him. Amen. 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 Because what? They were under pressure. And he knew they were going to be all right. They, they, they just need a little more time. They needed the Holy Spirit to come in them. Amen. And they were going to get better. But my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ said to him in a kind tone, and this is kind tone. If you can see that the, the tone is, is soft and, and, com and, and compassionate. Jesus said, have I been so long time with you? And yet has thou not known me, Philip? He said, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how do you say, show us the Father? He said, believest thou that I am in the Father? I like that, y'all. And the Father is in me. He said, the word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. He said, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Where? In me. He said, I'm in the Father. The Father's in me. The word that, amen, that dwelleth in the Father that's in me, he said, he doeth the works. In other words, I'm just a, I'm just a, a shell, if you will, that the Father lives in. And the Father just moved me here and moves me there. When I heal the sick, the Father's healing. When I raise the dead, the Father's raising. When I'm preaching, the Father's preaching. When I'm loving, the Father's loving. Beloved friends, that's how you and I are.